Good stuff. Player one. Eh. Player two. Uh. Game over. Slightly contentious. This heat is ruining my hair. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm in the wrong room. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson, Richard James, and Chris Dale. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still with us. And we are going to be watching part two of Thunderbird's Pit of Peril, yes. as chosen last week by our very special guest, Mark Silk, who we'll mm -hmm. be hearing from shortly. Jamie. Can you name two things also coming up in this week's podcast? Uh, well, uh, the welcome return of yep. the Jerry Anderson News 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 News. That's true, because there's always something amazing happening in the worlds of Jerry Anderson. That's very true. And, uh, well, I really enjoyed last week when we got letters from Posterons, but yeah. I think this time it's emails from Posterons. Yes, we'll be hearing from yeah. our Posterons who've been emailing at podcast.jerryanderson.com. Chris, two more things, please. Well, we've got the randomizer, as you said, part two of yes. Pit of Peril from Thunderbirds. That's right. And we also have... I don't know. Oh, Chris, it's a wonderful Mark Silk. There's no need to press the randomizer button for this week. Oh, no. Because last week, Mark Silk chose for us Thunderbirds, Pit of Peril. Mm. Are you ready to watch part two, gentlemen? I can't wait. Jamie, Let's get on with it then, yeah. Specs on. Oh, specs on. Last time on the randomizer. Oh, yes, I remember that. It fell into a blooming big hole. We've tipped over on our side. We can't move. General. We're 300 feet down. The Sidewinder weighs upwards of 500 now, tons. This is more tense than last week's episode. Yeah. This is great. Doctors could blow me down on the line. Oh, yes. Rescue number one. Oh, oh, God. Why did we have to show that again? Down to try and slip a line over one other machine. Right, rescue number two. Oh, dear. Do it, General. I'll go down there and try again. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, I, if only we weren't so darn far from civilization. We're darn again. No chance of effecting a rescue, but he said rescue, General. That's the yeah. idea. Almost like an international rescue. Yeah. All right, John. Tell them we're on our way. Hey. Mm -hmm. Something's about to you. happen. Can I just say? That was amazing, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Fab fact, fab intro, oh, fab, fab recap. Oh, yeah. I loved that. It's good that fun. was so I dramatic. I think you expect more of those going oh, forward. Oh, God. Got goosebumps. <sighs> oh, dear. Just standing about and waiting. Oh, they run out cool of shot, though. Yeah. They run out of cigars now. <laughs> no more ideas. Yeah, I guess they are. But I'm I also like the way the general's uh, cap and the top of his uniform collar almost look like a, an international rescue uniform. Yes, the hint of blue in there. Yeah, it's the same shade. You had any more information, John? Information today tells us that this machine fell into a crater some 300 feet in depth. Oh yes, it's yes. A blazing yes. inferno. Blazing inferno, yeah, remember that. 500 tons, yeah. and it's on its side, which means it can't move. Oh, right. those two guys are dead. Right, they're right across the details, aren't they? Yeah. How much about this crater? Uh, we ought to have brains along. Yeah, that's always a good idea to have brains along. Go ahead, Scott. Latest information from space station indicates need for Thunderbird 2 carrying part 5 and will need mm. brains along. I don't like that truncated dialogue. Okay, indicates no, need no, to run the no. the no, I, no. That always hurts so me in. An oddity of uh, the early episodes where they call it space station rather than Thunderbird 5, or John, ah. if they always call it Space Station. Ah, OK. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry, can we not talk over this lovely Sorry. arrival of Thunderbird 2? Yeah, and Mark Silk will be very pleased <laughs> I know, yes, Mark Silk's favourite bit. Yeah. And so it we've is already, so cool. You've already seen this once today. It, yes. You can't see this too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil's cool, best arrival, I mean, end I, of story. What's so special? This is how I arrive for the podcast every week. It's, it's true, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Straight to a chair. Ooh, there you yeah. go. Wearing your lovely brown suede uh, waistcoat. You always arrive in that, oh, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so lovely. And this is a, another benefit for having an episode that is kind of underrunning and needs extra material. You can play the whole launch sequence. I think part five. Ah, uh, part five. Yes, that's right. So we can it see it all. Great. One, two, One, two. Right, three. Do you know, every week, we get an email from somebody saying, just how did Thunderbird 2 descend over the pod when the pods are spaced closer together than the wings would allow it to descend? Yes. And to those people, I say, don't overthink it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, 
Oh, look who it is! Hello! Hello, brains! I don't think we ever see how the passenger lift connects to Thunderbird okay, 2, though. It just Chris, does Chris, don't well. overthink it. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just enjoying Brains' espadrilles. Oh, yes. It is so lovely. Oh, yes. We can, re we can remake it in the studio for Thunderbird 2. <laughs> Very slowly. There we go. Oh, this is, you can it, just imagine... Kid of the, a kid of 1965 watching this for the first time, even in black and white. Yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah. Even it's still by 2024 cool. standards. It's like, even by now, by standards of now, it's still very cool, yeah. And I wonder how it would still look cool, but the music as well just does so much yeah. to elevate this sequence. Yeah. I always I always say to people, I'd rather watch, I'd rather listen to the dialogue uh, sound effects and the music than watch the episode. Oh, right. But watch really? the episode without the music and the oh, sound effects. sure. Because they, they do so much heavy lifting. Yeah. Even 500 tons worth, potentially. Hey, Ooh. you're talking of heavy lifting. Mm. Ah. Good stuff. Oh. See how much power that lovely sound effect gives. Yes. Yeah. It peaks. Oh. And off we go. So good. Yep. Right. Ah, Settling, back boys. Back to the pit. Oh, dear. How's the cooling plan standing up, John? Probably not well, great. Checked a minute ago. There we have a, a southern sound of Shane Rimmer on board as well. And how long will the hull stand up to that heat outside? General Peters, sir. It's a call coming in for you. Oh, yes. Makes me think of all the BBC Two items from oh, the nineties. Yes. Yes. With you in four minutes. It can't be too soon for us, pal. I've really stuffed this one up. Peter is fantastic. You're gonna find it tough going. Different use of the word fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the word I would use. Hey, the temperature's rising. Is he drinking a coffee? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Temperature's rising. I have a really hot cup of coffee. <laughs> Damn hot in here. Got any milk? Break up. Start the air purifier. Right. Try to plug those fractures. I'll increase the cooling plant output and try to cool the wall. Okay. okay. Still, no one taking their jackets off. So. <laughs> ah, yes, Thunderbird two with wheels. Uh, another Thunderbird one with wheels. Thunderbird one with wheels. This is Thunderbird two. This has wheels. Yes. That's Thunderbird one. Oh, so excited about the whole thing, yeah. can't even count anymore. Yes. General Peters from Thunderbird One. Is there any news from the trapped men? Uh, afraid not. <gasps> Their radio failed ten minutes ago. Oh, oh so no. no. The ten minutes ago. Oh, that's no. it. For the first part of Peter Peril Part Two, which yes. may be slightly confusing. Peter Peril Part Two, Part One. <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah. we'll get okay. used to it. Well, at least rescue is on the way wow. at last. Yes, they've got there finally. Exactly. Mark Sill, okay, he's fine. our guest of the month. Let's pop on over to see uh, what his first Anderson memory was. Take a look at this. I asked you in our email exchange to provide me with your first Anderson memory, Mark. Yes. And you were very specific about this. It's very specific. It's one that I know lots of fans will join you in, right. but there's also a rather nice little story behind this as well, or a yeah. particular memory attached to this. So yeah. let's have a look at your first Anderson oh, memory. Oh, great. There he is. It's this, yeah, it's this. Off he goes. Yeah, you, there's the fella. <laughs> I mean, why just walk in? Yeah, we could I, do that. That would never do, would it? Yes. Can you imagine if a theme park did this? Yeah. That's perfectly happy. Oh, I love this. Slinky, there you go. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Come on, outfit. There we go, that's Virgil. How do they get dressed again? Because the, the, the oh. uniform drops down, right? Ah, oh, yes, it does. Now, the, we cut a bit too early there, or rather I cut yeah, that yeah. a bit too early. You do see the, the uniform rising up through the hole, uh, hole in the do, floor. But how's he got his dress on? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really thought that through, oh. to be honest. There we go, that's uh, Virgil Tracy, of course, yeah. uh, entering the Thunderbird 2. Yeah. Much referenced... 
uh, homage is all over the place. Uh, Ardman, famously in uh, Wallace and Gromit. I mean, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's purely that. Yeah. Uh, but you have a very lovely and sweet memory attached to watching watching that yeah, as a child. It was it was the thing that stands out to me as my my first Anderson memory, and it was my nan used to go on holiday and fly from Birmingham Airport, and back when it was called Birmingham. Air, Elmden Aerodrome. Oh, called, wow. Before the big one was there. Yeah. And um, we'd, we'd fly on a, she'd fly on a Saturday and we'd go to the airport and there were a bank of TVs. There were black and white TVs. Colour did exist. But black and white TVs and a load of chairs bolted to the floor that had slot meters on them. Right. And you could put, like, say, 50p in and watch and TV, watch TV. For, for, like, an hour. <laughs> whatever. And, and all the screens were all on Thunderbirds. Ah. And it was all on ITV. And clearly we'd, we'd arrive you know, a bit of the way through an episode. Yes. And that was happening. And, and it was it was just joyous because yes. you see this whole thing happening, but on all, a stack of TVs all at once. Yeah. And it was, um, yeah, I was hooked. Now, so was this kind of TV uh, what you would watch at home with your with your family? Oh, yeah. Was this family viewing at yeah. the time? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, my dad loved it. My yeah. mom loved it. But, um, I mean, dad was especially a... Yeah, Thunderbirds. Right. So uh, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Rich. Ah, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, yeah we, we'd sit and watch all this stuff. And, and he was so, well, the mom and dad were so enthusiastic about encouraging me to, to follow what I love and be part of this. I see. Yeah, but they adored it too. Yeah. And, of course, the, the, great, the greatest ship of all time, Thunderbird 2. Mm-hmm. There is no yeah. comparison. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so we very often find that when people watch Thunderbirds now, yeah. that it's sort of through a lens of nostalgia because they, it takes them back to their early childhood. Yeah. Yeah, Do yeah. you feel that as well? Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I also, I, I watched the, the episode, you know, the mentioning earlier, that I watched an episode today on the train, uh-huh. and it was... I was absolutely engrossed in the thing, yeah. and it wasn't. It wasn't because of oh, it was cool because I watched it as a kid. Yeah. It, it's a great show. Yeah, that was more entertaining than a bunch of films I've seen over the last year. Yes, it, and it's you know this is a, a good nearly an hour's worth of TV. Yeah, but yeah, it, so it's nostalgic. But I I watch I watch it because they're still great shows. There are so many different components to your career, so many different strings to your bow. Um, video games uh, yeah. features large. Loads. What, uh, what, is that a different process, voicing characters, or yeah. is it much of a muchness? What's well, the... Well, it's the, sim- well the, the similarity is you have to, you're performing a character that, if you're playing a game, you want to you hang out with these people. Uh-huh. You know, it's someone that you want to spend time with. Yeah. So ideally it's a character that, it, or it's a voice that it is... Um, stands the test of time. You want to spend a lot of time yeah. listening, or it yeah. might be something small, like the very the very first Nintendo game. I did one Nintendo game, but Nintendo sixty four rather. So it was a cartridge game, and I felt like I'd arrived because of a cartridge. <laughs> yeah. Now you can do updates and things over the web. Yeah. This is like this is a brick. Yeah. And, and, and the, it only had limited memory in this cartridge, and all I did was player one fight, player two fight. <laughs> Game over. It's called Fighter's Destiny. Okay. Yeah, but the, but the process, to answer your question, is you're, you're creating a character that's right for the game, yeah. that's believable, that can take you through the, the, the experience. But whereas this, you, we, we have a script and we perform it through. Yeah. You are literally, it, it's like every single permutation that you can do often with these things. Right. So there's, it could be, uh, uh, you know, open the door. You can't open this door. You need a key to open the door. Where's the key? You found the key. That's the wrong key. Oh, the door is open. Oh, got to find another door. And, and every single... And, and are these to picture generally? Or? No. Right. No, you've got like, a, like an encyclopedia, you've got like a huge brick yeah. of text. There's a great game... Um, for uh, Sega called Two Point Hospital and Two Point Campus. Yeah. I've been working on those games for, it must be five years now. Right. And as you played the game, there's this um, radio station that's on in the background, and it's absolutely ridiculous. And while you're playing there, there's some beautiful elevator music in the background <laughs> and three different extremely endearing personalities. <laughs> so at breakfast, it's Ricky Hawthorne in the morning. Good morning. And if you come to get your spleen scraped out, bring some change for the slot meter as the electricity is on the wonk. <laughs> there's that. Right. And, that's, and it's the Nigel Bickleworth who takes over from him at lunchtime, who sees everyone other than myself as absolute scum. <laughs> and, and then and then there's a guy at night or oh, Harrison Wolf Harrison Wolf the conspiracy theorist that guy oh but, good but, but, and wow. again but again the thing that makes that so 
great and has given us five years worth of stories within yeah. that yeah. is the right the writing is so good yeah. okay harry the writer it's mm-hmm. like having his points of reference are incredible it's like 10 different authors all in one brain yeah and he writes every different character with a completely different personality Amazing. so let's let, let's me go nuts well, how fantastic. Oh, Virgil, of course. Good choice. Going down the chute He's for Thunderbolt yeah. 2. Yes, yeah, looking quite well, actually, isn't he? Yes, we found the back of his skull. Yes. <laughs> we did find the back of his skull, <laughs> which helps. Finally, oh, yeah. we've reintroduced the Jerry Amson news every week. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, yes. By popular demand. Should we have a little bit of news? Yeah, all right then. It's the Jerry Amson news. More Jerry Anson news. Go on, then you can check a stick out. Yes. <laughs> uh, I feel we, we, we're missing something. Right. It's the Jerry Anderson news, 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 news. Oh, first time. Oh, yeah. Three part wow. harmony. Yeah, that was lovely. Yes, lovely. Yes, please, maybe not yes. harmony. Uh, yes. Well, if you're looking for an event to go to, Costrons, yes. then perhaps if you're in the UK, you might like to visit. Colchester. Colchester. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Why, I what's mean, going on in Colchester? Who doesn't have that on their list? Um, <laughs> um, you. Well, you do now because right. there's an exhibition going on. Yes. Uh, it features all sorts of bits and pieces celebrating the worlds of puppetry, particularly focused on the worlds of Anderson. Oh, wonderful. And with a bunch of stuff from the Joy Laurie archive. Oh, now, Joy uh, was the kind of the, the lead of the puppet construction and operating crew from Twizzle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she introduced people like Christine Glanville to the worlds of Anderson. Christine who would go on then to work with Dad for years and years and years. So yes. she's a very That's important amazing. figure in yeah. the early, early days. Yeah. Uh, the Joy of Puppetry runs from the 29th of March to the 30th of June okay. at Colchester Castle. Okay. Still yeah. Still yeah. So there you go, you can enjoy that. Great. Yeah. Uh, there you go now. Day out. Yeah. All right. Well, don't, you, maybe not just yet, because we've no. got a podcast to do. Well, and also, you want to find out what happens in Fit of Power. I do. I can't oh. wait. So you'll have to wait. Uh, did you watch Postrons, the Jerry Anderson Day live stream or broadcast? Yeah, I watched. Did you? Not all of it, not no. the whole 12 hours, I have to say. Dipped in and out. I bet you oh. enjoyed Satellite Scare, the UFO story from Nicholas Briggs, though, didn't you? Best ever. Thought so. Yes. Uh, and well, um, getting killed in um, Space Precinct. Again. Of yes. course. Yes. It happens. Yes. But he's all right now, don't worry. Uh, if you watch the live stream with Jack Knoll and me and co, yes. you may have seen the reveal of our latest Eagle collectible. Yes, yes, yes. Space 1999 VIP Eagle, which ah, I believe yes. transported Commander Simmons. Commissioner Simmons in the first Commissioner episode, Simmons. yes. This is uh, the one with the orange markings on the side. A uh-huh. lovely Only orange seen in the body. First episode. Yeah, so mm. quite a rarity. Uh, but that's coming very, very soon. More details on the announcement back in due course, but it's part of our lovely new collectibles range. Oh. We've got some great things in the works, all to be revealed, probably on future Jerry Anderson podcasts in the oh. Jerry Anderson News. Really? Wow. Yeah. So you get to see it first? Amazing. But also, probably. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, uh, also, yeah. Just, just to recap on last week. Oh, yes. Uh, Deadly Uprising. Yes. <gasps> Stingray's 60th anniversary. What about that? Multi platform thing. Well, it's just very exciting. And yeah. you may have also read in there that the first novel is the Titanicum Stratagem. Stratagem. Written by no none other. Who was? By none other than yes. Chris Dale. Oh, again. Oh, me? Stop writing books. It's only my second level one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. So that's the opener. I need mm-hmm. to finish it though. So. Great. Well. Yes. It's crack on. Time is marching on, yes, Chris. I, <laughs> should, um, well, I want to see how they get them out of the pit first. Yes, all right. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Yeah, yeah. I have to say also that there are other things happening in the Jerry Anderson universe yeah. that we don't even mention in the news. So yes. it's always best to keep your eye on all the Jerry Anderson socials on Instagram and TikTok and uh, YouTube yes. and Facebook, just so that you are the first of the Potsterons to hear the news when it happens. Yes, these are news highlights, I would say. Nuggets. News nuggets. nuggets. Okay, yes. fine. Well, <laughs> that news nugget brings us to the, the end of this week's <laughs> Jerry Anderson News. That was the news. That was the news. Nugget. And speaking of nuggets, <laughs> yes. one might say that's what uh, those poor unfortunate gentlemen in the pit will become if they're not rescued in time. <sighs> Uh, that is human nuggets. Right. Uh, charred Bit flesh. Green. Okay. Very grizzly. Yeah, we get the picture. But no more grizzly than what we've already seen. All right. Mm-hmm. We're back with Pit of Peril. Specs on. on. Can you increase the air purifying system? Oh, they're suffering a bit now. The exhaust fans at full power. Right. The cooling plants are full strength. Okay. Oh dear. So. But holds out. We're doomed. I am doomed. doomed. These silk rags are helping. Uh, yeah. Terrific on the whole. Mm. Keep at it, boys. 
We've got to hold on. Yeah. Where are they soaking the rags? In their own sweat? <laughs> or they've had to break open the coffee machine and get that water out. Yeah. It can't last more than another two hours. Right. Other members of our organization will be arriving soon. In two and a half hours. <laughs> I'll set up our remote TV camera so that we can take ah, a yes. look. And about oh. one's remote TV camera. Right. Which useful. Which is very useful and they only use it in two episodes. It's that useful. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, but you can't really make that argument for anything in National Rescue, can you? Well, no. This vehicle is only useful in one episode. Yes. We're up again. Right, Scott. See ya. Oh, great okay. noise. It is, done. yes. Ooh. And where else is that... Sa that sound effect used, Chris, because I feel like that comes up in multiple Anderson shows. I, I don't Scarlet. remember it being for any other machine except this. Really? And this turns up again in the Edge of Impact when it's going up the side of the tower. I, I've got this weird feeling. Positrons, if you know, mm -hmm. it could be somewhere else. It's somewhere else. Okay. Or not, then email us podcast at jerryanderson.com and correct me. Or support correct us. Me. Ideally, the latter. Oh, you've got me thinking now. Good. It's working fine. It'd be great if we saw an advert for Joe 90 badges. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Serial packets on the TV. So oh. Virgin and Brains have arrived. They've made good time. Lovely landing. Mm. Ooh. Slightly tilted. <laughs> Virgil here. Landed at rescue zone. Virgil's, Virgil's, Virgil's handheld mic is different. So there's the standard issue uh, Thunderbirds one. International Rescue one. It's got a reject model. Right, go on. Down you go. Yeah, we're not going to send the camera lower. Oh, no. Yeah, that'd be silly to <laughs> go you can lower. send a man down. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> sort of waste our expensive equipment. This is hopeless. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty good. Dries the rags out where they catch fire. <laughs> well, it, at least it stops some of the smoke. Gee, it's hair. <laughs> Where did this well, heat is yeah. ruining my hair. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. Gulp. That sounds bad. Is it a dolphin? No, that's keeping those guys. It's about time we had some action from them. I guess they're doing their best, General. Yeah. They, they haven't lowered anybody into the pit to get horribly burned yet. <laughs> oh, is this what I think it is? Yes. Uh, oh. This will please a lot of our potstrons who yeah. love the mold. Well, no, we've got to have a meeting in the lab first. Oh, oh. Uh, the rarely seen um, Thunderbird 2 pod lab. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Do we see this, Chris? Yes. Do we um, have Ever see that? I feel like it was, they um, put Brayman in there in a later one. Uh, Brains has a lab on Thunderbird 2, uh, on, on Tracy Island. Mm. Um, I'm not sure we ever see this one again. One use. Well, well uh, way back in the past, yeah. this must have been a, an open cast mine. Uh, oh. When it was exhausted, a large craters would have been left. It's better be going somewhere, Brains. From military no. equipment after the Second World War. Why is Virgil looking so cross? Well, Strange to think of the Second World War having taken place in the world of Thunderbirds, because that would have meant the Super Mario Nation equivalents to Ooh. all of those figures, which is quite weird. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's not go there too no. much. There's a spin-off. Mm. Super Mario Nation Churchill, I yes. can see that. <laughs> now, I don't quite... Um, this diagram doesn't quite match the, um, no. the effects. Burning rubbish. Sidewinder caused... Because you don't really get the impression that there's this topsoil bits at the no. top. At its weakest point, we have to remove the remainder of the crust so right. that the sidewinder can be dragged up the side of the pit. Ah. Right. But I think they've so. tried dragging it up the side of the pit already. Join oh us later on gosh. for Pit of Peril. We've got a plan. Oh. Will they part, be able to implement part two, it? Part two, part uh, two. So, or is it part three of part two next time? Anyway, whatever. Thanks to Mark Silk for joining us and for picking <laughs> Thunderbirds Pit of Peril. Let's head on over to our interview again that I conducted earlier. See what he's got to say for himself now. Yeah. It's uh, time to open the box. What? Let's take out two more questions from our viewers and listeners, this Mark. Very. Let's see what they would like to know from very you. Very exciting. There's thousands in here. Oh yes. <gasps> Thank you. It'll keep us going. Sorry to the others. Here we go. Question number this one, please, from Steve Bushel. Hi, Steve. It says, with a face for TV, you are very photogenic. Uh, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Can we spend some more time on this question? <laughs> no, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, I'm surprised you only seem to do voiceover work. Was this a conscious decision, or have you not had the opportunity to be in front of the camera? Do you perform any vocal exercise before your performances? Oh. Well, first of all, Steve, yeah. I'm a big fan of your judgment. Thank you for your time. Uh. <laughs> and, and um, yeah, it, it, it was a conscientious decision. I, I've 
I've just always been drawn to this side of the work. I can do so much more with this than I could ever do in front of a camera. Right, because you're not tied by your, your physicality, I suppose. You, yeah, you can be a, a 60-year-old, 5-foot dwarf. Yep. You can yep. be a 12-foot a, a ogre. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but it's that. And also, even like place. So for America, um, I was the voice of Bob the Builder for nearly a decade. Uh, and he kind of go, I had someone come up to me at a Comic-Con. I, I do love Comic-Cons and signings. Ah, yeah. And I love meeting them, you know like-minded people that we all like the same stuff yeah. and I had a guy come up to me once and say um don't you think it's kind of weird the American voice of Bob the Builder is not performed by an American but an English guy in England even though it's for America and I said well that's a really good question I said actually did you know the voice of Scooby-Doo isn't actually performed by a dog <laughs> and he went oh yeah I get it's the performance okay fine yeah but but, but again <laughs> if you were if you were known as as you know a known face People would know where you're from and all that. And, yeah. and, and you can, there's so much more you can do. I mean, even, even down to, even technically, I'm a big tech head. I've, I've you know, thank you, Thunderbirds, you taught me well. And I've, I've always, I started as an engineer and as a producer and, and as the button guy. Right. Directing other people before right. I was doing my own stuff. Yeah. And, and so technology is our friend now. Hello. Mm -hmm. And I've had it where, I, you know, I've been in a hotel in America somewhere and I take a little microphone with me. I've recorded, like, stuff for games or national TV commercials from the hotel room. Yeah, right. And it's very helpful. Yes. So, yes, yeah. Sure. What was the question? <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. And then do you perform any vocal exercise before you perform? Before you perform? Not really. I mean, I, probably, uh, I tend to sing. Mm -hmm. So I tend to have a... A, a song on yeah. and then sing along with that. Yeah. Not necessarily because I need to, but because yeah. it's kind of fun and gets you in the zone. Yeah. But um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm okay sort of sitting down just go and just doing yeah. it. Yeah, diving in. Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Oh, we have another yeah. one. Um, yeah, that's it, yep. Uh, this is from... Button Moon Hannah. Ah, yes, lovely Hannah, yes. Do you know Button Moon oh, Hannah? Oh, yes, of course, yes. Thank we you, know all our wonderful prods are on. This is fantastic. Well, hello to Mr. Spoon. Uh, hello, Mark. Spelled correctly, thank you. I couldn't decide which one question to ask, so I thought I'd just use them all. Good. Thank you, Hannah. What was the reason you were chosen to voice Troy and Steve? Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to do more for Anderson in the future? Mm -hmm. And if you were in the Andiverse, would you be an astronaut or an aquanaut. Oh. Well, let's go through, go through these in order. Yes, good. What was the reason you were chosen to voice Troy and Steve? Because Jamie and everyone that works with Jamie, including Richard, have impeccable taste in vocal <laughs> performance. Uh, that. It's true. And, and, and oh, I, I, I hope it's it's because they they knew that they could trust me or the, to, to do it right, hopefully. And I'm a fan and it means a lot to me. But in the end, it's going to be right for this. I'm really proud with what we, we've done. So yeah. that's... Hopefully, the reason. Uh, would you like to do more for Anderson in the future? Yes, please. Yes, please. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> Studio audience, anyone? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But um, I, I'd love to. Absolutely, yeah. And if you're in the Andiverse, would you be an astronaut or aquanaut? Um, I think astronaut, because the aquanaut thing, you could get very wet and soggy with the, the outfit. And you, you think of some of the outfits in Thunderbirds, they're super cool. Yeah. I mean, in Captain Wayne Rigby for Thunderbirds, I'll go that I'm the voice of. Um, He's got a really cool outfit, super cool jacket. Oh, yeah? I nice. would like his jacket. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, so nice. Button Moon Hannah, I think go. I'll be an astronaut. Thank Excellent. you. What would you be, Button Moon Hannah? Please tell us in the comments below. Yeah, yeah, do do that, exactly. Uh, what's, what's the most common question you're asked at cons or. Uh, what's your favourite character? It's, yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, all, all the questions yeah, I've asked. Yeah, yeah no, it's right though, because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've asked the same thing. Yes. You know, it's, it's like usually what's your favourite character, and and often it's the it's the latest one you've been working on. Sure. Because they're, they're, the, they're your new best friend. Yeah. But then it, it might be something that goes, you know, way back to some you, you did years ago. I mean, I, I, there's a show I worked on with Jane Horrocks called Fifi and the Flower Tots, and. It was like a family working on that. And I was this little boy, B, called Bumpo, bouncing blueberries, Fifi, Fifi, forget me not, forgot. And then there was a slug called Slugsy, who was completely adorable and lovable and a bit moist. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so I, I love him, but there's 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 low. I mean, he, he, I do loads of straight stuff too. Yeah, like um, within reason. Yeah, and um, uh, it, like for, for, so even you know that stuff. So I I love the the fact that the, those voices that I grew up just adoring. It's me doing my tip of the hat to those people half the time. Mm -hmm. So for years it would be me that you hear going. You know, uh, the, the magical world of Disney. You know, that thing. Or, uh, or you know, 
loads of kids' toy commercials. Yeah. There's, a, there's a radio station in Dublin uh, called FM 104. Now, back to the music. Dublin's hit music station. Your chance to win 20,000 euro at a meal with Richard. <laughs> so it's all that stuff. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Thanks to Mark Silk. Uh, now, uh, coming up shortly, we'll be hearing from our wonderful Podstrons because they've been emailing us at podcast.jerryanson.com. Mm-hmm. No more letters for now, I'm afraid. Oh, but that, that's not to say we'll never have any letters. I'm no. just saying for this week, no letters. I would like more. All right. Uh, I'm sure there are some on the way. Talking of liking more, I want to find out how the Thunderbirds team are getting on with their rescue of the signed winder from the Pit of Peril. Wow. Who's joining me in a watch along? I will. Me. Specs yeah. on. Specs on. I might stop saying that. I won't. <laughs> So we're back after the ad break, I guess. Yep, and here we go, finally lowering someone else into the pit. But this time, someone with a protective suit. It's Uh, sort of taken 20 minutes for them to get this far, to realise that this might be a sensible thing to do. Yeah, but the army didn't have any protective suits, did they? So So maybe they shouldn't have volunteered to go into a very dangerous pit. Good. All going to plan so far. Oh, Scott. So good. There's a lot of fire around that poor puppet, though. The smoke is too dense. Just like the army. Hey. It's like a blast furnace down here. Starting to lay charges. Oh. Yes. He's brought explosives okay, down into the fiery pit. The cable and get clear of the smoke. <laughs> the the commander's very shaky oh, there. Get him out of there. Uh, well, we have a machine. We I think that's a, a nice subtle way to make the, to remind the viewer that it, they're in the he- helicopter with the the rotors the going. Vibration. Yeah. Is this the shot where the mole almost tips over or, or bangs on the top of the pod as it comes out? Oh really? Clang. Looks like it might do. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Bash. we're stuck. Yes. We're stuck. There we go. <laughs> I never noticed that when I watched oh. it. Yeah. Sorry, now you'll Chris. never not see it. No one will notice it. <laughs> Carry on. From Moore. Proceeding to drilling position. Our first sight of the mole. Nice. First it's trip inside the mole. Very cool there. Yes. Would it work? Hmm. Yeah. I'd like to think so. Yeah. There's Let's something about so. equal and opposite reaction. Wow. Is there any one way to find out? In the law of physics that dictates if you... We, but we're talking about an upside-down sidewinder with a right-up or, or some sort of tilted cab here. So yeah. don't worry Find about us a guest who can come on and answer that question. Some clever scientist chap. Well, we've had one before, but we didn't ask him. <laughs> Tell him again. Yeah. Brian Cox. Bow from Virgil. One more charge to light, Scott. Nice shot. Good. Yeah. Be with you in a few minutes. See, some people would call the, these kind of long shots of deployment ponderous, but I think they're, they're sort of lovely. Yes, mm. and there's also something exciting, particularly as a child, when you know what's coming next and you're waiting for it. Yeah. Yes. And then your wishes are granted. Yeah, we work with a really lovely Canadian exec, and he always talks about the romancing of the vehicles. I think that's a really good term. 70 degree angle. Do you read me on track? Is that 70? It's more like 45. <laughs> right, right, four degrees. Four degrees. FAB. This is the, um, looks like the mobile control computer set up. It's in the this, isn't it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I've come up against an obstruction. Right. I'm giving up. Granite, Scott. A uh, uh, detour, uh, two degrees left. Then return to uh, original course. FAB. Mold from Virgil. Approaching side of crater now. Thinking Scott gets all the, the cushy jobs, staying inside, where it's yes, safe, you see, relatively. Virgil's the man. This is my exact thing, okay. why Scott is not the coolest Thunderbirds character, it's Virgil, because Virgil does all the hard work, and yeah. Scott's just like, oh, I might ruin my hair if I do that. Shall I tell you what makes him the coolest character? Come on. He's voiced by Shane Rimmel. Uh, that does help, yes. Come yeah, on. I'm not sure the voice can rescue it. Oh, love Shane's voice, obviously. Controversy. No, just fact. So the mole has arrived in the pit. Ready to emerge into crater. Emerging into crater. That would be a scary sight, wouldn't it? Yeah. I would stand too close. Get your hair caught in it with your tie. Well, I'd be all right. (laughs) 
And that's interesting. We have a, a transition there from, a, I guess, a model shop to a puppet shop. Yeah. Just covered by the smoke. Approaching you now. Very clever. Hmm. Thunderbird 2 lab from Mo. Virgil, abort. Uh, uh, right. Uh, prepare to withdraw. Okay, Brains. Are you ready, Virgil? What, what is Brains bringing to the party? Having come up with the plan, he's now just sort of supervising. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Liaising with the army. It's yeah. normally Scott supervising, yeah. so at least Scott's doing something this time. Yeah. Why didn't they just pop Virgil in the mole and go down the mole rather than winching him down through the fire and smoke? Is there a reason for that? Well, they want to try and rescue the whole Sidewinder rather than just the crew, for some reason. But yeah, no, but Virgil could have gone could down. Could have gone through that way, yeah. yeah. I suppose it's more exciting, isn't it? Yeah. That's a very clever <laughs> reloading there, isn't it? Very yeah. clever. Super convincing. <laughs> yeah. Very clever. Again, the music just, just sells it. We're going to see it all, are we? <laughs> We're clear of area. Go ahead. Detonating charges. Now. now. There it is. Yes, you don't get the sense that anything at the side of the pit has then collapsed in. It um, doesn't quite match the diagram. No. It's true. Only a few more minutes. And a cooling plant packs up. Uh oh, God, a few more minutes. And then the atomic so reactor and all the rest of it. My men down there have less than two minutes left. We're doing the best we can, General. <laughs> Very sorry. You're the one who Probably stuffed this up one. in the first place. Are you in position of Virgil? Nearly ready, friends. And here we have a vehicle that only appeared in one episode. Yes, you see. But I love this one. They are cool. It's very cool. Remote control vehicle two, operation. Had the little matchbox toy, a matchbox toy of this as a kid. With little um, suction cups that fired, and you'd always lose them. Yeah. You see, elevator cars from Trapped in the Sky, I kind of look at them and go, yeah, why would you design those? I can't really see their use. Yes. These, I kind of can see the yes. general use, so they make sense. Not just for pulling 500 ton sidewinders out of a pit. What else would you use them for? Recovering any vehicle that was stuck somewhere, something yeah. that had sunk underwater, something that was stuck underneath, writing a structure, mm. pulling away debris, I yeah. mean... Fair enough, all sorts of things. Yeah. Very much the Swiss Army knife of Thunderbird's vehicles. Uh, yes. yes, Thunderbird 2 is probably more Swiss Army knife, isn't it? I think they're the corkscrew. Ready to fire okay. magnetic <laughs> lines. Uh, uh, remote. Oh, Scott's not helping with this part of the, uh, the rescue. Four. A right, right. And off we go. Right. Ooh. You'll have to join us for the last part of the Pit of Peril oh, no. to Pit see how successful they are. Part four. Part four oh. of part two. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm very pleased to hear on the grapevine, word has it that those podstrons at home have been getting in touch with us oh. at podcast at jerryanson.com. Would you like to hear some emails? I would love to hear some emails. Charlotte, yeah. open the door, would you? This is the voice of the Podsterons. Yes, it's the voice of the Podsterons. And we Ooh. have one email each to read out. Oh, really? Okay. Over to you. I'm going to start, am I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good day, gentlemen, oh. and happy 300th show. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a while ago. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah, quite a while ago. Hmm. I'm working my way backwards through your previous episodes while ensuring I watch the interview parts in the right order, obviously. Wow, okay. Yes. Great format. Right. Which you have now well, changed. Have now changed. <laughs> Sorry about Sorry. that. Funny banter. Well, it's yes. uh, debatable. Happy nostalgia. Uh, yes. And all round good fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair mm. I'm now a confirmed podster on. Hooray! Once I was lucky enough to meet Jerry at a Fab Cafe event in Leeds, and he was charming. Oh, I'm writing out of curiosity about that chart-troubling song from 1989, International Rescue by oh, Fuzzbox. Yes. Oh. Can we sing this song? No. No, no. no, that's fine. Vague memories prompted me to find it. I was surprised to see Aid Edmondson appearing as the bushy-eyebrowed villain. Oh. Just wondering, A, what your thoughts on it were, 
B. Should it have been in the live-action Thunderbirds film soundtrack? And C. Did they have to secure rights to use Thunderbirds in their song? Looking forward to many more shows, FAB, and that's from Craig. Oh, thanks, Craig. Welcome, uh, Craig. A. Um, I rather enjoyed it. Yes, I do too. B. No. And C. I don't know. A. F. B. Uh, C. Slightly contentious. I believe they got in trouble right. with ITC at the time. Oh, did they? Gosh. And there were some sort of deposition type things ah. going on from various parties. Wow. And I think, I think ITC went after them for money. I think. Yeah. Uh, I may be mistaken there, right. but it was it was definitely problematic, and they got into a bit of trouble. Oh, gosh. As far as I'm. Uh, well, I would say mm -hmm. A. I think it's great fun. Right. B. Should it have been on the live action Thunderbirds film soundtrack? Well, anything would would help. <laughs> just just okay. white noise throughout. <laughs> yeah, and see, it, I, if I'm remembering right, I think they also use some old uh, special effects stock footage from Space 1999 in the video as oh. well. Space shots mm. and things, mm. um, which turned up in quite a few videos and uh, other shows mm. and things. But is that from World World Backgrounds? World Backgrounds, it probably is. Yeah, yes. so that was could have been licensed probably. Yeah, so. that would have been. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Uh, one here from Steve, Jamie. Oh, from Steve with two E's. Yes. Oh. Uh, hi, podcasters extraordinaire. Hi. I... Yeah, must have been sent to the wrong podcast. <laughs> I've just been watching the Thunderbirds anniversary episodes, yes. and there was an interview with Jamie by Mike Griffiths, lovely Mike, who was a fan in his youth. Uh, maybe he would be prepared to give an interview as he met Jerry 30 odd years ago. Right. Uh, I thought the 300th episode was one of the best you've done. Oh, right. So we've wow. changed things since then. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Mike is, uh, is, is, is an ITV uh, journalist for ITV Wales now. Oh. And he, he reads the news he, and uh, all that sort of stuff. And there's quite a few pictures of, on his Instagram, I think, of him talking to Dad or him meeting Dad. Right. Got into the local press quite a lot for being a bit of a young, a young ah, geek. I see. Oh. So yeah, we could definitely get Mike on. He'd be up for that. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Mike. Come on over. All right, yeah. I'll look into that. Uh, now, it's appropriate, isn't it? We're the second week into the new format of the, uh, the, the Jerry yes. Anderson podcast. It's appropriate that we hear from Phil Steer. Of I think for the Phil first time Phil since Steer. our relaunch. <laughs> Do you want to call it that? Phil Steer says, hi, guys. Hi, Phil Steer. Hi, guys. Uh, just a quick note to say many congratulations on your 300th podcast. And to mark this with my gift to you, a 10-star review on IMDb. Oh, oh thank you, Phil Thank Steer. you very much. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and speaking of IMDb, says Phil. Uh, that's Phil talking, not me. Phil Steer. Uh, Chris often mentions during the randomizer that such and such a puppet was also so-and-so in some other they episode were. or production. That's true. Which made me wonder... This is still Phil talking, not me. Yeah. Could Chris produce IMDb style listings for every puppet actor to appear in a Jerry Anderson production, listing all their wow. acting credits in the various shows? Quite a task, I imagine. But if anyone is up to the job. Wow. I think he can do it, yeah. Fine, done. Yeah, Signed, Carol. sealed, yeah, done. Right. contracted. Here's to the next 300, says Phil, and more. With all best wishes to you and all the Podstrons, Phil Steer. Thanks, Phil Steer. Um, yeah. Well, it's a lovely idea. Uh, it has already been done. Oh! oh. Um, yes, Fanderson put out a, a uh -huh. Century 21 ah. puppet catalogue uh, designed by our, our friend Mike Jones. Excellent. Uh, so it looks beautiful. It's it's very nice and uh, comprehensive. There, there is room for, for development oh. um, of it. Yeah. So, um, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no, but I think someone else has already done it, so okay, may fine. as well. All well, right. Maybe, so maybe it's not that <laughs> Well, no, no, no. It's it's fun because I I like looking at these guys and thinking, oh, that's that's that guy, but he was also that other yeah, guy and yeah, such. Yeah, so yeah. We'll keep it in mind. Yeah, cool. Uh, all for now, but do keep them coming in. Podcast at jerryanderson.com, and we'll read out your letters and emails next time. Most yeah. emails, maybe some letters. And maybe Chris will respond in a sort of non-committal fashion. That would be nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Look Might be. That. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on our final rewatch of Thunderbirds: <gasps> Peter oh, Peril. Yeah. It's the last part. Will they succeed? in the rescue oh. of the Sidewinder. Do we want to put money on it? No. Specs, Specs on. on. <laughs> oh, oh yes. That's what we want to see. Great sound effect. This is it. We're breaking up. This is it. We're oh. all going to die. I finally opened my jacket. Electro <laughs> <laughs> magnets in position. <laughs> Recovery vehicle engines in transmission. Oh. A bit of sweat around the eyes. Oh, yes, again, we have Virgil manning a master machine and a remote control unit. Yeah. Uh, there to back him up. Uh, and it's working. The sidewinder is shifting. Hey, we're moving. We're moving. <gasps> Can an engineer tell us if it would be possible for those two vehicles to shift a 500 ton thing? I mean, it doesn't look very likely right now. <sighs> 
but yeah. brains made them, so anything uh, is possible. Okay, fine. Yeah. Oh, oh it's no. not it's the best. Oh no. no. It is quite tense, this rescue. What they need to do is put some planks down beneath those wheels. Yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks, Brains. Uh-oh. But again, much like the Sidewinder, you almost get the sense that these recovery vehicles are like living creatures and they're really struggling and straining yeah. to do their best. It's that trying is, to rescue the big, the big beast. Something that Thunderbirds does really well is the vehicles become characters in their own yes. right, I think. It helps that this one has arms and legs. And yes! Things. And little hands! Yes. And a funny face! <laughs> Oh, oh, no. oh, lost a line. Twang. I'll have to wind it in and fire again. Oh, what a fan. <laughs> that, that was quick. Kill oh. 20 seconds. <laughs> Just reverse the film, that'll do it. <laughs> oh. Firing again. Let's hope it's not damaged. No, let's hope it's not damaged. Good point. Otherwise, Scott might have to bring up the third recovery vehicle. And we can't ask I him to do place. anything. Starting motors again. Back to this lovely, slow, ponderous yeah. music. Beep, beep, but with a beep, heroic edge beep. to it. Warning, rescue vehicle reversing. <laughs> Warning, rescue vehicle reversing. Come on. Yeah, this is kind of an inverted melody of the Sidewinders walking, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Clever Barry. Yeah. Oh, it's looking good, isn't it? It's looking good. <laughs> its limbs are all kind of... Oh, leave me alone. It is amazing how much a Thunderbirds relies on the model work. Yeah. It's, it feels like a 50-50 balance between character and model. I'd love to know how this was described in the script as well, and, and how closely the final model yeah. matches it. Because I'd imagine this was a model that probably caused some problems, <laughs> and they were quite happy to see the back off. Yes. Oh, the music is still heroic. But they're sliding back again. Hey, we're sliding back. And they should be <laughs> on their side and they're upside down, but they're not. Yes. Maybe they're wearing Velcro trousers. <laughs> could be, yes, yes. That could be, couldn't it? Yeah. There's something for the Jerry Amson store. I was about to say that. <laughs> oh. Nearly there. Oh, oh yeah. look. It's alive. Are they still going to be on the floor of the thing? Okay, everything's gonna be okay. Triumphant music. And this is a nice um, passage of time transition we're about to get here. They, they've got us out of the pit. Oh, we stay nice. with the guy who was rescued. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, yes. Was it all a dream? You could edit it that way, yeah. With the general saying, I've got a great mission for you to go on. There's a flaming pit involved. <laughs> yeah. No! Be the guy who hauled us out of that pit. Oh, one of them. No, you the didn't. The, the one who did the um, least work. <laughs> yeah, it was me. Thank you, buddy. You saved our lives. The colonel's right. Forget it. I'm glad we could help. All you've got to do now is get well again. How yeah. about the other man? Guess he's out cold. Uh, he'll be okay. I mean, um, he was the wussiest one. Like what about the other two that the army sent down? Any one. news of them? No, Anyone no, no, concerned no. at all? No, no, no. Yeah. No. Oh. no. Probably best we don't know what Scott happened. From front of two. About to lift off. See you back at base. FAB. Hey. Oh. So the helicopter is about to take off. Oh. Another. Oh, oh, we have a. A How medical back helicopter. on its legs again. Yes. <coughs> and our, our own uh, podcast guest, David K. Barnes, pointed out that it looks I like the Sidewinder is holding an invisible pint in <laughs> triumph <laughs> for having been rescued. <laughs> yes. All part of the service. But if you want to help, just make sure that no one tracks our aircraft. Oh. And if you see any more pits, just stay away from them. Now, is this the, this is the second episode? So is that the first time you've overtly heard you? we're a secret organization? If you track any of our aircraft... No, that was at the end of the first episode yeah. as well. Yeah. It's in my force. Because the hood took some piggies, didn't he? And oh, yes. Maybe he gave, gives chase. Set nice. fire to a little piece of the ground oh. there. 
<laughs> just set fire to the place we leave. <laughs> oh well. And Sorry. there goes the helicopter. Also, they didn't leave any warning cones around the hole or anything. No. Someone else could be in there now. Yeah. So, that was Thunderbirds, Pit of Peril. Yes. We finally got to the end of it. Yes. What do we reckon, chaps? Well, I think that was a step up from last week. Yeah. There's lots of groundwork, if you'll pardon the pun, yes. uh, last week. But in the second part we watched this week, I went last week for three, I'm going for four. Hmm. Not quite perfection, but pretty damn good. Well, I think I'd go for three on this part. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'd still grade the episode overall as a maybe a, a 2.5, I would say. Okay. taking the rest of the series into account mm -hmm. um, because of course we have to remember this second half is largely what was originally shot and the first half is yeah. basically yeah. just uh, yeah. redundant padding yeah. unfortunately Jamie? I am going to upgrade my score as well because it was a cool ending but only to 3.5 <laughs> oh dear I don't like this whole 0. 0.5 thing no. good luck with your math yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, so seven and a half you went for what? Three. Three. So that's yeah. ten and a half out of fifteen. That's so much this better than last week's week. installment. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's about right, yeah. Okay, but what was it last week? Eight. Eight. Marks out of thirty. So that's eighteen and a half out of thirty. That's yeah. getting yeah. Four, isn't already. It? That's Anywho, our first uh, three person randomizer. <laughs> a nice one to start with. It's Thunderbirds, Pit of Peril. Thanks, Mark Silver, for picking yeah. it. Yes, thank you, Mark Silver. And do let us know, Postons, what would you give Pit of Peril out of five? Ooh, maybe we should uh, change the scoring system to ten. That's oh, far too complicated. Okay. We're two weeks in now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't change it. No, two weeks. What are we talking yeah. about? Do let us know, podcast.jerryanderson.com, what you thought of Peter Peril. Do you remember watching it first time round? Many of our viewers and listeners will remember that. Mm. Uh, do you have it on DVD, Blu-ray, VHS? What's or your preferred all of the above. Of watching or all of the yes. above? Exactly or laser right. disc. Yeah, that's a laser, laser disc. disc. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there were laser disc releases of yeah. Thunderbirds. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Great. In Japan, there were loads. Yeah. yeah. Just before we say goodbye, it's time to one final visit to our special guest of the month, oh. Mark Silk. Over to Mark. We have to talk about Thunderbirds Are Go. Please. Uh, which is sort of, you know, technically not a Jerry Anderson production, but of course a sort of a continuation or a reinvention of, yes. of, of a much-loved uh, classic series. That is, this is true. I, I, I started off by me watching it. Ah. Uh, so I, I watched the first two seasons. Yeah. And, uh, and I... I, I let them. Uh, there was a director that I was working with on other shows. It's a great show called Go Jetters on uh, CBBS. Go Jetters, where I am the marvelous Grandmaster Glitch. I'll get you new jetters. <laughs> <laughs> Tearing up the furniture. But there's a, there's a guy that I work with on that who was a sound designer called Dave Peacock, and he's a brilliant voice director. I've got so much time for Dave, um, and he, he knew how much I loved it. Oh. And, I, and I don't know whether he actually was brought me into cast on it, but. Um, it was a collaboration of being around those people and yeah. I think people knowing that I can do this, I love this and, and, yeah. and you know, that. Yeah. And I got asked to audition for it. And it was, it's sort of, it, it's interesting just finding his voice again because I saw this picture of him and he's just super cool, you know, with, with you know, freshly baked on eyebrows. It, they actually look like, you know, <laughs> it's stuck on like this. And we we were kind of going from one to the other. Should he be English or should he be American? Right. And so it started it started off like Captain Wayne Rigby at your service. Yeah. International rescue should go back to what they do best, you know, rescuing kittens from trees, this kind of thing. And then we kind of the whole Anderson feel. There's you just take it stateside. Yeah. And there's just this swagger. Yeah. That kind of. It adds this extra element of cool. Yeah. And it was, um, so I remember there was this line which was more or less, international rescue should go back to what they do best, rescuing kittens from trees. Yeah. Okay, if you must. This, and on the first, <laughs> and you kind of hear that and feel he's cool. And is he a bad guy? Mm -hmm. Or is he a good guy? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure we even knew on episode, on yeah, the first yeah. episode that he arrived in yeah. season three. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I love being in that. Uh, is it a collaborative effort or, you know, between you and the director to find these voices? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And you sort of find yourself meeting halfway, yeah. as it were? Or? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, in the end, the, the, the program makers know the character better than you do. Yeah. yeah you're brought in origi you know, initially, originally, to, to create... A voice that matches their vision, yeah, and that can sustain however many episodes or however yeah. many seasons, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, there's straight away when you when you say Anderson, cool character, you yeah. kind of know where you are, yeah. kind of, you yeah, know? yeah, that's right. So that, that's a good starting point. You, you know the benchmark of what the expectation is going to be. You know, which 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 guitar do I pick up to make this sound right? Yeah. It's that, yeah. And then 
um, and and then you are guided by what they think is right. Because also, it might be that you can do something that sounds really kind of cool, but it has to fit in with what the others are doing too. So uh, again, sometimes one of the reasons why you might not get cast is even though you've you've done something that's actually a really nice idea, it has to fit in with the bigger mix. You know, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, the, the ingredients just all have to be right. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a huge collaboration. And how does it work technically? Are you generally, so there are many people in the cast, let's say yeah. half a dozen or yeah. eight or 10 people in a cast. Yeah. Are you brought in to do your work separately in a booth or well, do you? Be- I, I'm so glad to say we did it together. Ah. And this was dream come true And that's stuff. rare, is it? Or I, I think it's becoming more rare, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but I'm, I was just happy to just watch, to, to be there with everyone else. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm part of that show, so I'm mm. massively proud of that. But what I adored was being in the same studio as David Graham. Ah, yes. And, you know, for, for David to arrive. And I think he's yeah. one of those names that are uh, the, part of the, 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 the mix that made me want to do this. Yeah. And so for David to be there. Yeah. And, did you get the opportunity to tell him that or dare you tell yeah, him that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, nice. yeah. I've got, I've got a couple of photos of us uh, at the studio and there was, a, there was an exhibition of, of uh, animation and kids TV in Coventry a year or so before then. And, you know, I, I made sure of it. I, yeah. I, but um, it's important to tell people this stuff. Yeah, we say that often. It, it really is. It's, it's very easy to either be, if you're a fan, to be in awe of somebody. Yeah. Uh, and so you're either fanboy uh, or, or and just get a, you know, don't really have a proper conversation. Yeah. And I just said to him, it means so much to me. I said, thanks. Yeah. I said, you're part of the reason why I do this. Yeah. And what I loved, the next time I went in, uh, I went, um, I, I entered, and he went, Moldy Mark. Oh. And it's like, I, 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 I could have filled up, which, which is, it's lovely, because it actually means something to yeah, you. So, right. But the, the cast were great. Uh, David was there, K- uh, Van Novak was there. And I remember the excitement in the room where literally this information was locked down and no one could say when it was decided who, the, who was going to perform the voice of Jeff Tracy. Oh, yes. Well, because first of all, we didn't know would we find him mm-hmm. at the end of the final mm-hmm. season, but we certainly didn't know who would play the voice. And it was. Lee Majors. Yeah, amazing. And you go, Lee Majors? Yeah. I mean, this is royalty. Yeah. You know, a $6 million man, the yeah. fall guy, it's Lee Majors. Mm-hmm. And so for that to happen, that was very exciting. And, yeah. then, and then we had, um, there was a rap party at the, uh, once all these things, you know, once the whole thing had been finished. And they were, they were wonderful enough to give us this, uh, a, a special feature length screening of the last two episodes. Oh, yeah. So they did a special edit of the last two as one. Yeah. And the, and, um, the guy from Hackenbacker Studios, he did a special uh, mix of it too for the, for the theatre. Amazing. And it was, it, everyone was there. Rosamund Pike was there. All the cast were there. I was there. And, um, and it was, I remember going down the stairs, <clears throat> went down the stairs for this, you know, this special screening. And I walked in there and I knew there was food, you know, some nibbly bits. Walked in there and I'm thinking, I don't recognise anyone. And it was The Incredibles 2. <laughs> <laughs> it was screening for Incredibles 2. Uh, oh, I know you. I don't actually know you, but hello. I'm in the wrong room. Uh, right. so, but it was, apparently that was quite good too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. but that was better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Mark Silk. He'll be back with us next week because right. he's our guest all month. How nice. It's like it's Mark Silk month. It is. Oh, it's nice, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Silk. Silkery. Mark 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 March. Mark March. Oh, I don't know. Silk Yeah, anyway. Silk Ember. Sounds like one of those uh, Dulux colour paint ranges. Yeah, it's huge, oh, isn't it? Yes. Silk Ember. Anyway, uh, bye for now. We'll be back next week. More Podstrons, more news. Mark more Silk again. Yes. And something, something new. Non Thunderbirds. Well, you can't guarantee that. Because it's random. You can't, no. But it won't involve a pit. That is true. Or Probably. peril. It will involve peril. Yeah, hopefully Probably. there'll be peril. Anyway, yes. should we wrap this up? Find out next week. We'll see you then. Bye. 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 Let's get started. Let's go. That is a question for you, actually. Are yes. there any 
Anderson episodes or films that don't involve a degree of peril? Ooh. Any Anderson stories at all yeah. that don't involve a degree of peril? I, I mean, would the, um, think possibly Lavender Lavender Castle? one or two. Lavender no, Castle. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, there's always there's, some. There's, there's, Torchy is quite uh, dangerous perilous. in its own way. Yes. yes. Hmm. Um, okay. Well, if you can think of a perilous, perilless episode, <laughs> email us podcast at Jerry Anson. Well, there's one or two where people have birthdays. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's I mean, there's no peril on the birthday. Yeah, is that what you were hoping for? No. no? Let, let's, just, right. let's just go. Let's be awkward. Bye. That was an Anderson Entertainment production.